more based on tactics uh, into the elbows, the knee region. You can hold the limb and kick high this way in a very quick fashion. More rules. They had this generalization that it was more poor people that have to fight for a living. You know, if you talked about one style, they said, oh, that's, that's no good. This, they, they don't do it the right way and vice versa. They, they're, again, there's, there's a difference in both. Hi, everybody. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the differences between uh, some of the Thai martial arts that uh, people already know and some that are becoming more popular nowadays, like the old traditional styles. Um, the, there's a general term called Muay Boran, which is basically, it's like an umbrella term for the old style of Muay Thai before it became a modern sport. Um, there's a lot of different controversy and opinions on the origins and development of these styles. But um, I'm going to share some of the commonalities that is found throughout the history. Um, there were many styles that were developed in ancient times. Um, and through their development, they were divided by regions. So uh, you will hear names like Muay Chaya from the southern region, Muay Loburi, uh, Muay Korat and Muay Tasao, which has come from different provinces uh, in Thailand, and they each specialize in different techniques. So even though they share commonalities as the Thai culture and Thai uh, philosophy of fighting, they had their own methods of training and their own unique uh, strategies and techniques. Uh, for example, uh, Muay Chaya um, was very well suited for uh, smaller people that uh, could have a lot of mobility and they specialize using certain parts of the body as uh, create a compact structure so that whenever you clash with your opponent, the techniques would clash uh, into the elbows, the knee region, and the wrist. So they had different techniques that separated them from other styles. They also specialized in a lot of different types of elbow uh, movements. Um, you have other styles like um, Muay Korat, that was very aggressive. Uh, it used a lot of straightforward, a lot of pressure tactics. Uh, it was suited for people that were bigger and a little stronger. Not to say that anyone can uh, learn any of these styles depending on what, what your body structure is, but I'm saying in generalization. Uh, so Muay Korat was very forward, very aggressive, a lot of uh, hard uh, punches and swinging type of motions um, and very hard kicks, usually a lot of front kicks. Um, you have other styles that were more athletic and uh, require the opponent or the practitioner to be very agile and more based on tactics and acrobatic movements. So each region, uh, Muay Tasao, uh, that was more kicking oriented. So there's very fast style very, um, very angular and with lots of tricky kicks that can come from very odd angles where you wouldn't think a person could kick even in close ranges. So even if a person you're thinking, you know, you have to give them kicking range over here, but if you were up close with a person in basically face to face range, you can hold the limb and kick high this way in a very quick fashion. So the, the leg can still reach and hit the person in the jaw, under the armpit, or uh, the solar plexus, if need be. So each style in each region had its own specialties. So as time went by and these things, these styles begin to evolve, um, in time, the sport version began to emerge. Uh, before that, there were competitions that were being held, sometimes for... Uh, uh, royalty. Uh, so there's there's a lot of colorful history on how this developed. But fast forwarding to modern times with the introduction of more rules and in, including Western boxing techniques. And so what the style evolving what we know today as a modern Muay Thai sport. And even then, once those uh, elements were introduced, it, the sport continues to evolve like it should and like anything else does. Um, but there are some differences 
in the old styles. Um, they're mostly concerned with damaging the opponent as quickly as possible. Uh, they're not interested in really having a bout. That's something that was developed as dueling became more popular between their own gyms or different styles in different regions. We get together and compare and have competitions. Uh, things evolve. But the main premise of old style is to end the confrontation as quickly as possible with uh, creating as much injury as you can. The mentality comes from back in wartime when the arts were more weapons based with the, the swords, the fandab, the, the staffs, the axes, when they used to fight in elephants, you know, uh, in these types of wars, your concern was to create damage quickly to an opponent because immediately you would be fighting somebody else or maybe more than one person. So the mentality was always to do techniques that end the confrontation very quickly and very aggressively, very decisively. So that's what, of course is different from modern Muay Thai, which is a sport that has rules. And because it has developed in time, uh, influenced by many factors, including the betting system, and some people, you know, say a lot of some corruption uh, influences there. It's shaped on how the game of Muay Thai developed through time to what it is today. Another example is um, in old style Muay Thai, clinching was not something that was viewed as favorable. You did learn clinching techniques, but it wasn't something you wanted to engage in because uh, it doesn't lend to ending the uh, the fight very quickly. So. The minute that an opponent will try to clinch on you, you were doing something very aggressive uh, that will not be allowed in competition today. Attacking the groin, attacking the throat, attacking the back of the head, the temples, uh, eye gouges, uh, and in some instances, even trying to break a limb. So in time, those techniques were taken away in order to have a more uh, suitable sport so that we're able to then enjoy Muay Thai, what we see today. Uh, if those techniques were included today, of course, it would be a different thing and fights would not last very long. And not only would it be, uh, you know, uh, not right because people would be basically maiming each other. And in some cases, maybe even ending in death. Um, that's not a sport and we have to, we, we live in modern times and it's not war. So there's a lot of differences and nuances on how techniques were also developed and delivered. So. Uh, we've, we covered a video now on low kicking. We'll be covering some other videos on some of the other nuances on how the elbows were delivered, the knees were delivered, why clinching was not favorable. Um, again, because you don't want to spend too much time uh, engaging an opponent. Hi, my name is Mike Soto. I'm a martial arts coach, combatives consultant with over 40 years of researching, learning, and teaching martial arts. I want to invite you to my new video course, Fundamental Skills for Martial Arts and Fighting. The contents of this video series is based on my extensive research in Muay Thai, Western boxing, and Chinese and Filipino martial arts. In this course, you will learn some essential skills that will create a more connected and relaxed body structure that will allow you to deliver more power in your strikes these body skills will create a more efficient way to use any offensive or defensive technique. You will also learn some essential footwork to guarantee the delivery of your techniques. These skills can be applied to enhance any martial arts practice and can greatly benefit anyone from beginners to advanced practitioners, regardless of style. Don't miss this opportunity to bring your martial arts skills to the next level. So techniques were developed so you don't do that. Uh, another thing is like the famous the round kick that Muay Thai, modern Muay Thai has been iconically in any time that somebody thinks of Muay Thai, they think of the round kick, right? So uh, back in the day, back in the days of, uh, of the old styles, of course, the round kick existed, but not so much in the form that you see today. Uh, and depending on each style, they had their own version of how they developed the mechanics for it. It was not the technique that you see today or it wasn't considered such a and has such high regard because there were techniques developed to counter that kick if you were to throw that kick the way it's thrown today um there would basically most of the time uh, be countered by a movement that will direct the kick to either the elbow or the knee to ricochet 
or uh, redirect that kick where you would end up getting severely injured in your shin or your knee if it got to hit the uh, your opponent on the right spot. So that was not that popular back in the day, but it's popular now because those techniques uh, do not exist in modern Muay Thai. So, and I want to make something clear. I'm not, this is not about making one style versus the other because it's all a family and it's all, they've all developed and they all have their own pluses and minuses. There's a lot of uh, rivalry between uh, old style and new style people. You know, they all want to critique each other on what is good and what is bad, but that is not my intention because I love it all and I think we should join instead of separate to enjoy and keep alive a lot of techniques that many people today have no idea can be very effective, even modified for the ring and definitely for real life fighting or self-defense. Um, in my personal experience, I started in 1996, I came to Thailand and uh, I was looking for uh, particular, particularly old style training. And at that time uh, in Bangkok, it was a different era, a different time. This is before all the modern things that you see today. And for a foreigner to go there at that time looking for these things, they thought I was crazy. You know, they thought like, you know, why, why are you here? Is this, this foreigner, why do you want to do this? Uh, of all things, you know, that's uh, in a, a lot of times people thought commonly that people that got into Muay Thai, they had this generalization that it was more poor people that have to fight for a living and they had no other choice. Why would a foreigner that has a good life would want to choose to do that? At that time, it was different than today. Today, Muay Thai is so popular around the world because of uh, K1 and MMA. So that was not the time when I learned it. When I learned it, it was very difficult to get into a Muay Thai gym or club. They really wanted to take you seriously because if you would, would, would not a, a a fighter that produces money because Muay Thai at that time was, you know, it's a money making sport. You know, the coaches have to make money. They have invest their time and effort and you as a, as a trainee or a fighter then have to put in the time and fight quite often to make enough money to sustain yourself or possibly a family and pay the coach, you know, whoever gets their cut. So if you were a foreigner that came here to learn, you know, they didn't see any value on spending a lot of time in you because you know, what kind of money are they going to make out of you? Which I don't blame them. It wasn't that they were looking at it from a negative way. That's, that's their living. You know, that's how they earned their, you know, the way to eat and survive. So I, I understood that, yeah, why invest so much on a foreigner when they have fighters that actually are going to support the system? So it was very difficult. I was very lucky because I was persistent and I eventually found a, a, a teacher that was, uh, willing to teach some of the old ways and uh, I began my training at that time and it was very very interesting and very harsh because I think they wanted to see if I was really real or if I really wanted to do it so I went through a lot of hardships and I think they were intentional to see if I stuck around and did it right so it's a lot of stories that are very funny yeah but we'll we'll talk about that next time um, so anyways I was able to find a teacher uh, a couple of years later. I kept coming back to Thailand every summer for training. And then I found another teacher and I was lucky enough to be introduced to Muay Chaya at that time, which influenced a lot of what I did and do today, um, along with other martial arts that I've been practicing for the past 30 plus years, 40 years. So, um, and there was a big contrast between the two styles that I was learning. And of course, at that time, because it wasn't so popular and it was difficult to find, they were very, uh, they had a very tight knit club between, they were very separate. So of course, one thought that the other was useless. Uh, you know, if you talked about one style, they said, oh, that's, that's no good. This, they, they don't do it the right way and vice versa. They, they always critiqued each other a lot, but I saw the value in both. So I continued to train it as much as I could get. Of course, then I started meeting people from different clubs and different modern uh, style Muay Thai, which at that time in the 90s, it was a little bit different than even today because things have been evolving. So I was fortunate to get kind of like a big picture and, and try and do many things and be the experiment 
uh, foreigner for a lot of these guys that wanted to uh, try their stuff on me. So I suffered, but I gained a lot of knowledge because of it, and I, I don't regret one bit. So um, there again, there's there's a difference in both methodologies and their way of approaching combat, but they're just cousins. They're, they're just all part of a whole. So uh, hopefully we will be getting more into the differences between the styles as far as the older way of looking at things and techniques and the way that they develop their body mechanics in order to develop the way to hit with efficient power that maybe or may not be present in the modern version of Muay Thai. So hopefully we will continue with this series and uh, provide you with more information.